Hello everyone. Today we will study about oral malodor. The other name is halitosis. It is a term used to describe noticeably unpleasant odor exhaled in breathing. Synonyms are breath malodor, foul breath, fetal odor, or simply bad breath. As an introduction, intensity of halitosis differs during the day due to stress or fasting or due to smoking or alcohol consumption or eating certain foods such as garlic, onion, meat, fish and cheese. We all know that order usually worse upon awakening because mouth is dry and inactive during the night. The classification of halitosis that is Three classification: genuine halitosis, pseudo halitosis, and halitophobia. First, I will tell about pseudo and halitophobia. Pseudo means false halitosis, that is, it is not perceived by others, although the patient complains of its existence. It can be improved by counseling and simple oral hygiene measures. Then, about halitophobia. After treatment for genuine halitosis or pseudo halitosis, the patient persists in belief that he or she has halitosis. It can also be controlled by counseling. Then about genuine halitosis. It's an obvious malodor with intensity beyond socially acceptable level. From name itself, we know it's genuine. There are two types physiology halitosis, pathology halitosis. Pathology halitosis means it's a disease it occur orally and extra orally. Causes for physiology halitosis. It's due to mouth breathing, medication, aging and poor dental hygiene, fasting or starvation, or due to tobacco or eating food such as onion, garlic, fish, etc. And alcohol. The next is causes for pathologic halitosis. It occurs orally and extra orally. First, we will learn about orally. That is periodontal infection. That is order from subgingival dental biofilm. That is specific disease like acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and pericoronitis. Pericoronitis is inflammation of soft tissue surrounding the crown of partially erupted tooth. The tongue coated with microorganisms and stomatitis, serostomia. Um, stomatitis is swelling and sores inside the mouth, and serostomia is dry mouth. Then faulty respirations, retaining food and bacteria, unclean dentures, or due to oral pathologic lesions like oral cancers, candidiasis. Candidiasis is caused by gel, it's because uh, due to candida albicans. Then parotitis, parotitis in inflammation of parotid gland, cleft palate, then abscess ulcer, dental abscess, dental abscess is accumulation of pus in a tooth. Next is systemic and extra oral causes. That is, first one is nasal infections like rhinitis, sinusitis, tumors, and foreign body. Then disease of gastrointestinal tract like hiatus hernia, that is stomach hernia, that carcinoma, then GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease. Pulmonary infections like bronchitis, pneumonia, tuberculosis, carcinoma. There are certain hormonal changes that occur during ovulation, menstruation, pregnancy, menopause, that time also halitosis will occur for some patients. Then systemic disease like diabetes mellitus, hepatic failure, renal failure, uremia, rheumatologic diseases uh, uh, for dehydration, fever, cirrhosis of liver, for every case, this halitosis occurs. Then diagnosis of halitosis. When a patient comes, first review the medical, then the personal history, then clinically examine. That internally, it's easy because we can check for tongue, tongue coating, then evidence of mouth breathing, then serostomia. Serostomia means dry mucus, so you can check for dry mucus. Huh? Then complete periodontal examination for that probing for attachment levels. Probing depth, just check for probing depth. The measurement of oral malodor. How to measure it? 
Patients should be instructed not to eat, chew, rinse or smoke for at least 2 hours before examination. Patients who are on antibiotics should be seen 2 weeks after discontinuation of medicine. So how to test is? There are 5 tests. So first one is subjective organoleptic method. It's a basic test. Oral malodor is assessed by an investigator at a fixed distance by smell. And he can assess the severity grade based on that. Next one is gas chromatography. In order to assess oral malodor objectively, a portable industrial monitor has been developed. Before that, you have to tell, there are three major volatile sulfur compounds in mouth, mouth air. That is hydrogen sulfate, methyl mercaptate, dimethyl sulfate. So, we told that a portable industry monitor has been developed for gas chromatography. So, these machines are designed to digitally measure the molecular levels of three major voltage sulfur compounds in a sample of mouth air. That is hydrogen sulfate, methyl mercaptan, dimethyl sulfate. So, they are accurate in measuring the sulfur compounds of breath and produces visual results in graph form by a computer inter interface. You can see in computer uh, in a graph form. So, the third one is halimeters. These are machines. This is also a machine. It measures the level of sulfate gas found in person's breath. The same like gas chromatography, it also measures the sulfur gas present. So, it has two drawbacks. Common sulfate such as mercaptan are not easily recorded and can be misrepresented in test results. And it is sensitive to alcohol or using alcohol containing mouthwashes for at least 12 hours prior to being tested. So, it has two drawbacks. So, the fourth test is Banner test N benzoyl DL arginine 2 naphthalamide. Some of the bacteria like Propheromona gingivalis, Tripodima dendicolis, and uh, Bacteroid forcitus produce waste products that are odiferous and results in bad breath. So, if our mouth contains in this bacteria, it will result in bad breath. So, how to identify is before that, this bacteria is able to produce an enzyme that degrades the compound N benzoyl DL arginine 2 naphthalamine. So, when a sample of patient saliva that contains this bacteria is placed within this banner testing compound, they cause it to break down. So, as a result of this degradation, the test compound changes its color indicating a positive reaction. That's easy to learn. Then the final test is chemiluminescence. That is, this test involves mixing a sample containing sulfur compound with mercury compound and resultant reaction causes fluorescence. This test is highly sensitive. It's good actually because it can measure even the low level of sulfur compounds in the sample which is in contradiction to testing with halimeter. Because halimeter has two drawbacks, you know, mercaptan and this is not recorded. But this chemiluminescence, this can measure even the low level of sulfur compound. So next is treatment and management of oral malodor. I said the simplest way to distinguish oral from non-oral origin is to compare the smell from mouth and nose. It's very easy. Patient itself can check. If the origin is nasal or medical etiology, we can refer to a concerned specialist. If it's from, if the order is from mouth, we want to check. The dentist want to check that is surely for dental treatment. Then for genuine halitosis with oral causes, the treatment is how to treat for genuine halitosis. First one, by improving the 
oral hygiene and periodontal health through basic dental care such as oral irrigation, sonic or ultrasonic toothbrushes, then tongue brushing for scaling also scaling, then chemical reduction by oral microbial load in chemical reduction includes rinsing or gargling with an effective mouthwash. The best mouthwash is chlorhexidine mouth rinse. Then another treatment is another treatment is I'll tell. We know that the water sulfur compounds that is we know that compound that sulfur compounds results in bad breath. So if you are able to convert that compounds to another it's a good treatment. So another treatment is conversion of volatile sulfur compounds by using various methyl ions. Sink is an ion which bonded twice negatively charged sulfur radicals to reduce expression of this volatile sulfur compound. So for that, a new solution that is halitum. Halitum treatment. Halitum is a new solution containing 0.05% chlorhexidine, 0.05% Cetyl peridium chloride and 0.14% zinc lactate with no alcohol has been more efficient than 0.2% chlorhexidine in reducing voltage alpha compound. How is actually chlorhexidine is good um, for antimicrobial, but this halita is having antimicrobial action. Besides that, it has an ability to convert this voltage alpha compound as because of the sink so we finish the treatment then finally i'll tell we can conclude here we can conclude by simply that is a rotten x smell a rotten x smell if the breath is having a rotten x smell it indicates Voltage sulfur compounds with having a sweet odor. Uh -huh. It indicates liver insufficiency. If it's having a rotten apple smell, it indicates uncontrolled diabetes. If it's having fish odor, it's kidney insufficiency. I hope this video is helpful. Please don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.